good evening this is rashak reddy assistant professor in st martin engineering college today i want to discuss the topic corrosion and its controlling methods so how can we define the corrosion and uh, some uh, effects of corrosion and how can we control the corrosion so up to <coughs> what extent the corrosion methods are employed to control the non term corrosion and avoid corrosion so you can define the corrosion definition basic definition of the corrosion so generally the metals in the presence of moisture and oxygen when they are exposed prolongedly so that uh, there is a decay of uh, the surface of that metals surface of the metals are uh, deteriorated or depleted in presence of moisture or any oxygen or water so different types of corrosion may be there so basically you can define the corrosion can uh, the surface of uh, metals deteriorated in presence of uh, moisture or oxygen in presence of uh, moisture or oxygen to form their oxides and hydroxides or carbonates is uh, nothing but the corrosion to form the oxides or hydroxides and carbonates can be defined as a corrosion you see the examples of a corrosion so generally the metals undergo corrosion which are having a lower reduction potential or higher oxidation potential so generally the metals uh, which are able to lose their uh, electrons uh, are <coughs> prone to more corrosion example the metals like uh, zinc aluminum magnesium and uh, iron copper so when the uh, metals are exposed to any moisture or any oxygen so they are able to convert into their uh, oxides hydroxides are carbonates and also they form uh, some thermodynamically stable compounds see examples uh, if you see the iron iron when it is uh, corroded it is uh, converted to its uh, rust form that is fe2o3 3h2o so this is a rust formula where the corroded form of the iron you can see the iron metal which is used in the preparation of different uh, uh, equipments like uh, uh, railway tracks or any other uh, water tanks or oil tanks so this uh, when they are exposed to any prolonged uh, environmental impact so this is a formation of a rust so this is another example copper so copper when it is corroded you can see the formation of a green film formation of a green uh, film formation of green film so that is nothing but uh, copper carbonate uh, plus uh, copper hydroxide so this is a green film you can uh, observe on the uh, surface of the copper so like this in this way metal uh, when exposed to atmosphere gases or any other mixture of uh, uh, liquids so there is a process of corrosion so that may be types in the water line corrosion pitting corrosion or surface corrosion or uh, see like other examples we have uh, different types of corrosion whatever it may be so see here today i want to tell about uh, some effects uh, which is uh, deteriorating the or destroying the different types of metals in uh, different equipments uh, some uh, effects we will see effects of uh, corrosion so the wastage of uh, metal so there is a wastage of metal so there is a wastage of metal 
and the loss of uh, ductility and malleability of metal. So this is a very <coughs> drawback for the quality and quantity of the metals. Uh, so loss of uh, ductility and uh, malleability. So this means uh, so where the metals cannot be having good quality. So the ductility means the conversion of the metals into thin sheets. So there is a when there is a quality reduction, the metal cannot have its own specific characters like ductility and malleability. So the metals when they are losing the quality, they can't be converted into thin sheets. Malleability means so which cannot be converted. So when they are losing the when they are losing the malleability, so they can't convert into different shapes. So we are losing the quality of the metals. Another effect is machinery damage. So there are different types of machineries which are using which are using different types of alloys. This is the defense equipments and also in aeroplane industries. So we use different types of alloys with the mixing of different types of metals. So when they are continuously exposed with the environment, so there is a conversion of metals into their hydroxides, carbonates and other sulfates. So like this, there is a loss of machinery. Loss of machinery leads to uh, loss of economy of uh, India. And next, uh, other effects we can uh, study lifespan. So there is a loss of uh, lifespan of uh, metals. So when they are go underground for corrosion continuously, so though they are utilized for long time, so continuous corrosion leads to loss of the lifespan and leads to accidents. So if you see the construction of bridges, so construction of bridges with the different types of metals, metallic bridges, or these alloys are also used in the joints. So joints of the bridges are also made up of metals. So when uh, they are undergone for corrosion, uh, so it leads to destruction of uh, joints and it leads to final accidents. So this is a big loss for the human life. So there are so many examples. So here we are seeing in daily news about the accidents due to uh, less quality of that metal used in the construction of uh, bridges. So other effects also we have like uh, utilization of uh, some uh, clean metals in the uh, preparation of uh, oil, in preparation of uh, wood and beverages and also used in the transport of uh, oil. So where there is a combustion of transport of oil using the containers or pipelines. So where there is a corrosion, it leads to contamination of the corrosion and there is a contamination of the soil. So transport of oil through pipelines, when these pipelines are corroded, it leads to <coughs> damage of the quality of the oil and also some uh, contamination is also for the soil. And uh, see the, some containers are also used in uh, food industries and uh, beverage industries. So where they are continuously exposed to water and other solvents. So finally it will contaminate the food where we are using these metals for the juice industries or preparation of refinery oils. So like this, there is a contamination of food and contamination of beverages and also contamination of oil. So this is a major drawback due to the corrosion. And also a major effect so when there is a leakage of metals uh, through the pipelines, it also releases heavy metals. So heavy metals, so when they are immersed, when they are uh, connected with these uh, water resources, these uh, heavy metals are uh, mixing with the water and also damaging the life of aquatic plants. So aquatic plants, so which are depending on the underground water in the oceans or rivers, so when these heavy metals are mixing with this uh, water, so the heavy metals may mix up with this uh, cells and tissues 
or a revival into the cells and tissues of the aquatic plants and leads to death of the aquatic plants so in this way in this way we can know some effects of corrosion some effects of corrosion then how to control the controlling measures we can see so we can know how to control some scientific methods that are employed to control this corrosion to control this corrosion some scientific methods to control the corrosion we have so cathodic protection method cathodic protection method we have so in this cathodic protection method we have two types of protecting the metals against the corrosion first one sacrificial anode method sacrificial anode method and immersed current method sacrificial anode method and immersed current method so these are the methods utilized for protecting the metals against corrosion to see the first one <coughs> sacrificial anode method so sacrificial anode method so where the metal which is a base for the any equipment is protected against the corrosion using other anode which is a easily oxidizable example you can take the under sacrificial anode method you can take the see under the sacrificial anode method so example if there is a ship a ship the base of the ship is made up of steel okay so this ship may be moving continuously in the water the steel should be protected so so we are may be acting as cathode so we are using another zinc block so the zinc block is a sacrificial anode it is connected to this steel so where it is protecting the steel against the corrosion how it is going on means the steel of the steel metal which is the base of this hull ship hull should be protected is that our aim that is our aim to protect the steel here the zinc block is acting as a anode so which is having more oxidation potential which is having more oxidation potential as a or less reduction potential compared to steel so that whenever the corrosion is starting in between this steel and zinc block so this zinc block will act as sacrificial anode and it corrodes first compared to steel so here zinc block is acting as a zinc block is acting as a sacrificial anode sacrificial anode and protecting the steel against the corrosion simply so zinc block as it is in going for more oxidation it has corrodes first compared to steel block so in this way you can explain the cathodic protection method where the cathode steel is protected against the zinc block where it is acting as a more anodic part in this way you can explain one sacrificial anode protection method next the immersed current method immersed current method impressed current method so in this method we are utilizing the outside electricity to nullify the corrosion current and protecting the cathode see how it is taking place for example there is a pipe so which is a connected to ac current another anode any other magnesium metal so during the corrosion of this cathode so to protect this cathode against the corrosion we are applying another <coughs> any metal which is acting as cathode and which is having the uh, lower reduction which is having more reduction potential compared to anode it is acting as a it is acting it is acting as a anode 
so when you are applying a outside current ac current so it nullifies the current which is flowing towards this cathode it nullifies the corrosion current and finally and finally it protects the cathode from corrosion so this is also a best method to protect the cathode against corrosion thank you